Piggyback astronomy is where you put your camera gear on a telescope and it rides along with the telescope. I'm going to show you how it works and a little bit more. My name is Dylan and Donald. You're watching <laughs> Star Stuff. So a few of you have said that uh, the music in my videos are too loud, so I apologise for that. Hopefully the gentle, soothing sounds of the acoustic guitar will... As with all astronomy, the Earth is moving, the stars appear to move, so when you're taking long exposures you need to track the motion of the sky. Now normally you have a really lovely mount like this, either an equatorial mount like the CGX or you've got an alt azimuth mount which is just up, down, left, right. But when you're just using a DSLR camera and you don't really need a big telescope set up, you've just got a DSLR lens or a smaller camera set up and you just want to track the motion of the sky so that you're you can take exposures that are longer than a few seconds, especially when you go over that wide angle and you're using a telephoto lens or something like that. It's not quite a telescope, but you're still shooting far into deep space, so you're going to get trials if you're just on a tripod or something like that. So the solution is tracking the sky. Now there are different products for this, particularly the uh, Skywatcher Star Adventure Bundle, which is hugely popular right now. It's got a very low weight capacity, so you can just chuck a camera setup or a very small telescope on there, and it does the job great. Uh, it is essentially an equatorial mount. There are other products as well, like iOptron and a bunch of others, and they're not designed for telescopes, they're designed for small camera setups and will track the motion of the sky, so you can take those longer exposures. However, if you're like me, you do already have a big telescope set up. So there is the option to ride piggyback, which essentially just means putting the camera on, not through the big scope, but just riding piggyback on the big scope as it's tracking the sky. Now the beauty of this means that you don't really have to use guiding if you don't want to. Because you're running at a smaller focal length, you can actually get away with long exposures without doing a lot of guiding. It's not as wide as a full Milky Way shot, but it's not zoomed in to a nebula or zoomed into a galaxy. So as you can see here on my uh, bigger telescope, I have this little Celestron piggyback adapter. And it has a little screw thread on the inside, which I can then just screw into uh, any regular DSLR camera. Because ideally you want it to match with the curvature of your scope, whatever kind of adapter you end up going for. But uh, really, as long as it screws in, it doesn't matter too much. The camera will be running parallel with the scope, uh, but you don't have to worry too much if it's not dead parallel. It'll still be tracking the motion of the sky and it'll still work. Uh, then you can take your long exposures and the results can be really spectacular. Here are a few shots that I've done. Uh, here's the Rho of Eucus region, which is a massive feature, very visible in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of other patches of sky that suddenly open up when you're not doing completely wide, wide field, but not zoomed right into a small target. Uh, especially those areas in the middle of the Milky Way uh, where you can see nebulas as like red glowing jewels amongst the dense star field. It's really fantastic. Of course you can guide if you want to and you'll get sharper pinpoint stars if you do that. The images I just showed you were 30 second exposures but if you're running software like Backyard EOS or some sort of tethered DSLR capturing software you can run in bulb mode or you can do super long exposures as well and really get that denseness of the Milky Way. Now the best thing about a piggyback setup is that you've already spent all the money on all the big gear, you've already spent money on the telescope and the mount and all that sort of thing. You don't, you're not actually using the telescope in a piggyback setup, you're basically just using the mount. Uh, but it means you don't have to pull everything down, you just whack that little adapter on, put your camera on and you're away because your mount is already aligned or you do your polar alignment and star alignment uh, that's usually good enough to do unguided exposures and the greatest thing of course is that that little piggyback adapter it doesn't cost very much so it's worthwhile finding out what adapter you need for your particular telescope or your particular mount just to screw in your DSLR and away you go it's super easy and it's a great cheap way of unlocking another focal length that you can use in your astronomy toolkit Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.